Good morning. Welcome this morning to worship at Third Reformed Church. We are so glad to be gathered together in the house of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we declare together that our help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Amen. For the Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say on that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins together. Merciful and righteous Lord, these days we have compromised, divided, and pointed fingers. When did we point to you? These days we have boasted of our rights, our opinions, and our plans. 
When did we listen for your spirit? These days we've torn down our fellow humans and savored the taste of insults. When did we measure our words in love? We have lowered our gaze to look for the nearsighted. We groan with despair at what we can see around us. When did we boast in your promises? Fill us with your mercy, righteousness, and justice, and restore our hope in Christ Jesus above all for all our days. Amen. Assurance of God's love and grace from Isaiah 12. You will say on that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, and you comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Brothers and sisters, in Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. privilege of receiving new members uh, to our congregation. And so I would like to invite at this time all who are being received this morning to come forward and to take their place by the baptismal font. The elders of Third Reform Church have welcomed these persons, Mary Claren, Vicki Mast, Madison and Curtis Pierce, and their daughter Isla, and Bailey Brummels, to be um, received, to make their profession of faith, and to be received as part of our congregation. We ask them now to declare their faith before God and, God and Christ's church, that we may rejoice together and welcome them as brothers and sisters. We're so glad to have all of you becoming a part of our church family in this way. Beloved of God, I ask you, before God and Christ's church, to reject evil, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce sin and the power of evil in your life and in the world? I renounce them. 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 Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation? and through worship and service, seek to advance God's purposes here and throughout the world? I will, and I ask God to help me. Amen. I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Amen. Congregation of Third Reformed Church, I invite you to stand as you make your promises to these friends. Third Reform, do you promise to love, encourage, and support these brothers and sisters by teaching the gospel of God's love, by being an example of Christian faith and character, and by giving the strong support of God's family in fellowship, service, and prayer? Amen. Amen. You may remain st standing for the Apostles' Creed in one moment. To the new members, do you promise to accept the spiritual guidance of the church, to walk in a spirit of Christian love with this congregation, and to seek the things that make for unity 
purity, and peace. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Amen. I invite all of us together to repeat the Apostles' Creed as a sign of our shared faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, would you pray with me for our new members? Let us pray. Mary, Curtis, Madison, Vicki, Bailey, remember that you are baptized. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked as God's own forever and called to follow Christ in mission. So we pray, Father, for Jesus' sake, Stir up these your servants, the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm their faith, guide their life, empower their serving, give them patience in suffering, and bring them to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only King and Head of the Church, these sisters and brothers are now received into the visible membership of the Holy Catholic Church engaged to confess Christ and to be God's faithful servants until life's end. By the Holy Spirit, we who believe and are baptized receive a ministry to witness to Jesus as Savior and Lord and to love and serve those with whom we live and work. We are ambassadors for Christ who reconciles and makes whole. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. Welcome to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. We ask that you join us in giving thanks and praise to God and in bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, we do welcome our friends, and so we say, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Would you rise and share a sign of peace with one another this morning? Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. I will, I, that, Vicky needs that for the prayer. Of, oh, I'll take it. Okay, take then it. I will grab it, yeah. Peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Glad you're here. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. I'm so happy. Peace of Christ be with you. Well, kids, don't sit down, don't get too comfy, because I'm calling you back up. So would any of the children like to come forward uh, for a moment before dismissal? If you are um, through third grade, there is programming for you in Worship Center, and if you are um, fourth through fifth grade or middle school and want to come and color at the table, you are invited to do that as well. All right. Well, I am glad to see all of you. Thank you for being here. I don't remember. Oh, okay. Because it's been a long time. We're so glad you're here. You just take a seat and we'll take it from here. Second grade. Love it. Yes. This is Gabriel, friends. Okay. All right. Um, well, I 
want to talk a little bit about some of the things that we'll be speaking about as our service goes on and when you go to worship center. Um, we might hear slightly different stories, but one of the big themes that we're going to hear about in all of the ways that we worship today is how God leads us and how God stays with us, goes with us, makes plans for us and a place for us. And I hope that as you go and listen to the story of God's plan for his people in the Bible, that you will also remember that the same kind of love and care that God has, um, that we read about in the Bible, is the kind of love and care he has for you also. Now, did you have a question? Yes, so how can I see myself up there? There's a camera that does that. Yep, there's a camera for that. Well, everybody wants to see, so. I want to pray for all of us that we will be able to have eyes and ears and hearts that are ready to know when God is leading us and to grow in all of the ways, whether it's through praying or through reading the Bible or coming to church, all the ways that God has given us to follow him. So shall we pray together? God, we thank you for each one of these children we thank you that you see us. We thank you that you never sleep and never slumber in your leading. I pray, God, that you would seal your word through your Holy Spirit to each child as they take in the power of your love and the length you will go to to walk with us, to make a way for us, and to save us. Pray your blessing on the teachers and all the time that they share, on our listening to your word here in the sanctuary. In all things, God, we look to you. Because of Jesus and through your spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. You got tired of keeping your eyes closed? All right. Well, there we go. Um, I want to invite the kids up through third grade to go with Miss Beverly to Worship Center. And if any of you want to come and stay at the coloring table, you're welcome to come and get a coloring sheet or activity um, there as well. Let, let us pray. God of mercy, you have promised never to break your covenant with us. Amid all the changing words of our generation, speak your eternal word that does not change. Enable us to respond to your gracious promises with faithfulness. Help us to find our hope in the light and life of Jesus and to trust in the help of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Third Reformed Church, last week, as we dove into our texts and readings, we heard about the day of the Lord. In a letter to the Thessalonian congregation, uh, they, we heard about the awaited day that believers watched and longed for, for Christ's second coming, even to the point of struggling with what to make of life in the meanwhile before Jesus returns. And in the gospel reading last week also, we heard about hard and tricky questions about how our lives on this side of death will translate into whatever awaits us on the other side. And we heard Jesus strong and encouraging and challenging words about resurrection and God's restored creation when death is no more and all things and ways of this world are no more. And Jesus points both the critics and the seekers to look for that realm of restoration and shalom when things will be fundamentally changed by the hand of God. As we continue this morning in God's word, 
we will hear more of these themes and we will be ask one another and ourselves, how can one journey from this side to the other? How will we ever get there? We'll begin this morning in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 25 to 29. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. I've said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I've told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And from the Old Testament prophecy given to Isaiah in chapter 65, verses 17 to 25. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there, shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred years will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree, so shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. And they shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How can one walk from this side of reality to the other? How will we get there? There feels like a chasm of actual real life that begs our attention more and drags our last day's hopes and imaginations back down to the bumpy, rutted roads that we are all walking on. And surely, God's beloved people felt the distance of it too. They received these hopeful, audacious promises when their own road also looked far, far different. And real life, pretty hard to change from what they could see. The words in today's Old Testament passage 
point not only to long-held hope of the restoration of their people, of a return from exile and from suffering to being restored and reconciled, but point even moreover to a whole new creation that God was pointing to in which everything would be changed. Wrongs made right. Weeping ended. Purposes fulfilled. Lives made meaningful and long in closeness with the ones who sets all things right. Can you hear it? Can you hear how God was calling his people through this prophecy to trust in his faithfulness even when they could not see or feel what they wanted to see and feel? That for all the despair that broken human life brings, that change would come. Longings would be met, promises kept, not just any promises, God's promise, the promise to be our God and to lead us to salvation. A promise that God would keep and cherish God's beloved from present reality into the renewing of all that God has made. Amen? And if we widen our lens on Isaiah's words, these promises also come with sobering words to those who give up on waiting on God's faithfulness or put their trust elsewhere or just in themselves. Make no mistake that the call to trust in their God is the beginning, the middle, and the end of this prophetic vision, to trust in God's faithfulness and to know and believe he will do as he has promised to do. And what about us? Where do we start looking for these things? How do we start peeling our, keeping our eyes peeled as to what God is yet up to? It strikes me that we read these words, these prophetic words of a new creation, of a painful, a painless existence, and the joy of fulfillment in all the ways humans long to be fulfilled. We, sit, we read these words from Isaiah to Revelation at sickbeds, and at gravesides, and at funerals. We sing them and paint them and imagine them through fits of anger over injustice. We choke out the words through tears and pain brought near by disease that steals our loved ones. We point to these words when things nearby seem too far gone, and we look hard to see and even trust yet that God is in fact on the move, listening or noticing. Is it true for anyone else here, along with me, that it is in our crisis, in our pain, that we tend to be the most attentive to listening for God's voice, for God's hope? Jesus knows us so well, he had a feeling it would be so. He knew his words of reassurance and this promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit that he spoke before he was taken from his disciples. He knew that those words that might have sounded strange would soon vibrate with meaning and longing as the next days of his dying on the cross and burial played out. And he knew that his loved ones, his beloved, would need to cling to it He seemed to know that they were about to face a trial that would feel like a disaster, that would make them think that everything they knew had been changed, and in fact, it was, but not in the ways that they feared. 
Jesus' words in John 14 take us to the questions that we sometimes dare to wonder about theologically and sometimes are smacked with between the eyes in the course of our daily lives. Don't our hearts become troubled? Don't we find ourselves gripped by grief or an acute fear of a future we cannot see or predict? And just like that, the ancient echoes of hope are pushed to the background of all manner of our struggles and pain in front of us, all of our wounding of one another and our strife. These things, these things that consume us and occupy our central vision will one day be the former things that no longer come to mind. But how will we get from here to there? To a land of no more tears? Who will lead us to the realm in which all that we are longing for in God is revealed? How will we ever arrive at the peace and security of God's holy mountain where hurt and destruction and disease cannot exist in the presence of the creator and the giver of life? How? Because if we look around here, it doesn't look anything like that yet. When's all this gonna start? As I said, we often keep the words of the promise of a new creation for moments of crisis, when our hearts are crushed and we grasp for threads of hope. And God's word is powerful if you are hurting, and I hope that these words come to you as a balm, what you need for God to tend to your heart. Also, in this prophetic vision, we're given a picture that sounds something like a world that we recognize except restored, transformed to its best at the hand of the creator, the one who made it and all of us. We see that God has loved, does love, and will love all that he has made in his wisdom, and he will change and renew everything to reconcile it to his glory in and through Jesus Christ. Amen? So perhaps we must not keep these words for only the crises of life and death. Why not read them not only to reassure, but to reorder how we look for God in the world? Walter Brueggemann points out that unlike what one might imagine of a vision of a new creation, we hear something in Isaiah's words from the Lord that sounds like the best of the practice of love in public rather than a fantasy portrait from another world. The vision of the new creation is not just a new handkerchief for our tears. It sounds like hope restored. It sounds like justice. It sounds like righteousness living out, caring for one another, and seeing people through to long and satisfying lives. It sounds like fulfillment. Well, who? Who will help us then to remain steadfast, to have eyes to see how it is that all will be changed and fulfilled if this is so? Brothers and sisters, God has been speaking, shouting, sighing, beckoning his covenant loved ones to look to him and remain in him. Earlier in this same chapter of Isaiah 65, God exclaims, I think maybe exasperated, here I am. And in Jesus Christ, we hear the clearest of God's here I am to us. 
In Christ, we're shown God's love and salvation promise. And in Christ Jesus, too, we are reassured that God is not far off, but longs to speak truth and faithfulness into our lives, even before we call on him to guide us. Do you remember the words of Isaiah? I will answer them before they speak. And Jesus told the disciples, I will hear you. I will, I will answer you. I will give you what you need. In verse 26, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. All right. So to our question, how do we get there to this way that God is leading us? It's promised that it is not up to us alone, that God is with us. It's clear from Jesus and from God's promises from long ago that we will be given help and guidance, not just for me and for you, but for us and among us as God's people. As we look to God, listen for God, and hope for this help from the Holy Spirit, we may ask, how can we put one foot in front of the other to go in the way that Jesus, through his Spirit, is leading us? I'm about to bring us back down to where boots hit the ground. And I think that you're going to suspect I'm biased when I say that I think that where we start, where all of this could begin for us with the help of God, if we dare, is that it could start right here. Like right here. We could start a ritual of recentering on a regular basis around our hope in Christ. We could do it like maybe once a week or so, or certainly more if you can make it. We could come and seek shelter and fellowship in a space where we lay down with honesty and humility the real things that break our hearts. And we could decide to listen and share and comfort one another from the strength we've been given as a sign that we know and trust God is already listening and caring as well. If we dare, we could regularly scour the great promises and the words of the one who changed everything and remind each other and talk about it. We might wrap ourselves up in a vision of community life that sounds more like this new creation centered around Jesus and his cross than the kind of power games and bounded sets of winners and losers and us and them that we are pulled to everywhere else. If you want, we could grab a hold of some simple signs like water, or bread and cup, and we could let those simple, profound signs steer us forward into the life we're being made for, the kind of flourishing that God promises that we heard in the new creation. I mean, what would happen if we took into our hearts the ones who this vision would astonish most and put out our shingle that there is more room than what we need for just us, so come on in, in this kingdom where Jesus is bringing life, we might, I don't know, we might put some of these words to great tunes and we could proclaim them together and sing. We could do it with one voice so that they are imprinted on our hearts, so that they come to us when we need them, and so that the brokenhearted among us who cannot sing just now may be comforted in the hearing. And maybe, maybe, I know this is wild, maybe we could take some time to pray that Jesus, who changes everything, that he would give his spirit to guide us and train us how to live, how to suffer and not fall away and not to lose hope, we could lean in and look up and polish our lenses for one another, daring to pray dangerously 
expectantly, some words kind of like, God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And ask for God's kingdom to come and take hold among us. But why would we do any of that? You might ask. How on earth would God use that to get us from here to there and change everything? Did you catch what Jesus said just before so much was about to change? He said to them the last words of our gospel reading today, and now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. Don't those words have echoes to the promise of the vision of Shalom where God speaks and answers even before we call on him? What if God today here is calling us to let his good news be so regularly spoken and lived out, so indelibly printed on us that each time, each moment, and on that great day when all is fulfilled, it is unmistakable to us. And we can believe. Third Reformed Church, here's a promise and an invitation for us to soak up today. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth but be glad and rejoice in what I am creating. How will we get from here to there? Here is the place where we are called to start and to practice walking in faithfulness in all the ways God has already showed us. May our faithful, trustworthy God begin among us even now in his plan to make all things new. Let us pray. For the gift of your word and your promises, for the help of your Holy Spirit and the hope we only find in you, Jesus. We thank you. Amen.
Reform Church, it is good to be together on this Lord's Day. Um, I thank you for the prayers for the team that went to uh, Juarez the past few days and visited uh, the ministry from Terra de Gracia, and I bring greetings from Pastor Samuel and the people of Frontera de Gracia, and they appreciate and covet your continued prayers, and we will pray for them in, in a few moments, but I do bring their greetings. Um, we have a, uh, a congregational meeting today at 4 o'clock, and we invite you to come. We would love for you to be here in person. Uh, our children's director, Reagan, will have activities and things for our children up to fifth grade. Um, and we promise to get you out of here by about 5 o'clock. Um, did you like how I hedged there? About 5 o'clock? We're going we're gonna to do our best. We are going to do our best um, to, to get you out of here so that you can go about your day. Um, I was confused, and I blame it on the fact that I was in a different country, remember? So, Grace, I thought there was going to be pizza. There is no pizza. So to everyone I promised pizza to, I'm sorry. There is no pizza. But we want you here anyways. And if you were just coming for pizza, come on. Um, so, you know, this is important. So we're, we're, we're uh, really in, uh, would love for you to be here. For those that cannot be here, of course, uh, there is a Zoom link that was sent out uh, to the congregation. We also want to rem remind you that after this, there is a continuation of adult education here. Um, Reverend Steve Stam will be continuing his uh, series, The Three Kings, and also Ellen Quintra will be at 1130. Uh, if you desire prayer, we want to remind you that there will be people outside um, the, uh, these doors after the service, and if you would like prayer, um, they can pray for you then. And during our time of offering, we remember that God has been good to us. And so we ask that in this time, uh, we may uh, celebrate the blessings and the gifts that God has given to us. And so as we meditate on the words that our choir has for us in song, may the Lord bless you as you give to him.
We go to our God in prayer, and I think the um, offertory that we heard sets the table for us beautifully, doesn't it? That last line, the last two lines, great creator, as we wait here for glorious rebirth, use our hearts and hands in service, sculpt your kingdom here on earth. That's why we go to our God in prayer, because that's fleeing, participating, joining this work. As we do that, we as a community go together, and we remember a couple of things. First, that we want to extend sympathy to Ann Baker and Tom Davilar in the death of Ann's father, Jerry. Um, that happened this past week, November 7, in Grand Haven. Would you come, or would you join me in prayer? God, your kingdom, your promises do indeed come true in your son, Jesus Christ. And so we come as your people in prayer, praying for your kingdom come, praying for your will to be done, praying that new creation may break in all around us. May it break in in our lives, God. May it break in in the ways in which we interact with our children and our parents, our friends and our spouses, our coworkers, students, strangers, and neighbors. May your new creation break in in the way that we think and work and behave and speak. May it break in in the way that we serve and hope and love and practice faith. May it break in in your church right here and right now. We remember those who cannot worship with us regularly, those who are away from us and we wish were with us. We pray for those for whom coming back to church physically is hard, maybe emotionally, spiritually, or physically. God, for these who work to overcome those things, hold them and sustain them. For those who cannot yet be near them and comfort them, we thank you for the ways in which you've provided technology for us to still be together and for the volunteers that work with that. We pray for those in hospice, Margaret Dornboss, Lois Jelving. We pray for Muriel Boltheis, Beth Dumay. We pray for Dennis DeWitt. We pray for Martha Beld, 
We pray for Jack Kuiper and A.E. Lacey. We pray for Mary Heideman. We know our world is, or we know that our, your church is bigger than just our corner of 13th and Pine. And so we pray for people all over your world which are working hard in the name of your son Jesus. For Lynn, Cheryl, and Lubna. We pray for Frontera de Gracia and those who wait at the border and those who long to cross. We pray for those who need healing in your church. We pray for Adam Vanderark and Steve and Dawn. We pray for those who are suffering in silence, who need your healing. We pray, O oh God, that you extend that healing. We pray for those who grieve, those who mourn. May they have your hope in the resurrection of your son, Jesus. And so we pray for Ann Baker and Tom Davilar. Bring new creation into your world, O oh God, where there is famine, where there is drought, where there is war, where there is unrest, where things cannot be counted on, where things are constantly in turmoil, we pray that your new creation break in. Today, we remember the veterans of conflict, of war, those who have served, and we pray, O oh God, and acknowledge the promises that are true in your prophet Isaiah, that one day we will not need the instruments of war anymore, but we can toss them into the fire, for we do not need them. May that day come soon, God, and in the interim, keep your veterans and those who have been wounded in mind, body, and spirit, those who have suffered moral injury. God, keep your world. May it break in new and beautiful more and more every day that the world may know that you are God. And so we pray boldly the words your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
family of God, for the things that you have brought here that you need to leave behind, may God tend to you. For the ways that you came empty-handed that God has given you a sign, a word, and his hope. May you go full and filled. May God grant you more and more understanding of the leading of his Holy Spirit in the ways of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as you go from here to all the places where God shall lead you, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn the light of his smile upon you and give you his peace, now and forevermore. Amen.